200 schools compete, only 14 make it to the finals. Which will be champions? Welcome to the Arkansas Governor's Quiz Bowl with your host, Vicki Newton. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Quiz Bowl 2019. I'm your host, Vicki Newton. We have an exciting day ahead with 14 high school teams competing to see who will win this year's state championships. Our Quiz Bowl broadcast is divided into two parts. This morning, we will see the top two finalists from the 4A, 5A, 3A, and 6A divisions. That will be followed by a 90-minute break, and at 1.30 this afternoon, we continue with the 1A, 2A, and 7A divisions. Also, let your friends and family know that they can watch the live stream at AETN.org. Joining me now is Bill Davis, our commentator for the Quiz Bowl competition today, and it's great to see you, Bill. What can we expect from the teams competing? We've got a lot of experience out there and some really good coaching that's going to go on today. We do have three rookie teams, and we always watch those real close. They've had lots of practice. They're ready. But this is a different environment for them, so we'll watch them very close. And as a matter of fact, one of those rookie teams will be one of the first games we have this morning, this game that we're going to have right now. I'm expecting a lot of fast answers. I'm expecting a lot of high scores. Last year, we had two teams to run a 60-second round. We'll be watching those real close because sometimes that exciting. turns a game real quick. You can be behind, pick that 60-second round, flip the game's process real quick. So we'll be watching that. But that doesn't happen very often. They can't count on that. The most points are in the first quarter and the fourth quarter. And that's when the team members have to stand alone. They're just them and the buzzer. And uh, I, I'm expecting a lot of high scores. Really am. You mentioned the environment, yes. the excitement, the adrenaline. Any advice for the teams? Yeah, it's hard to say. It's a little cooler in here than normally you would be competing in because of what we the temperatures being low. But uh, the coaches will have worked with this. I mean, they will try to have prepared them for it. But with all that preparation, you still got to wonder, are their nerves going to get a little sure. bit in their way? Sure, sure. We're working with some of the sharpest kids in the state, without a doubt. Watch them. We're looking forward to your comments throughout the day. Have no doubt it's going to be a fun and exciting day, so thank you for joining us and make sure you stay with us. At this time, I'd like to introduce the morning judges along with our scorekeeper and timekeeper. Our judges today are Joanna Sutton, Sammy Benjamin, and Lisa Morrow. The head judge is Will Heatherly. The all-tournament team and MVP judges are Carolyn Shry and Nita Wimberly. Our game scorekeeper is Lauren Taylor and timekeeper is Melinda Pitts. And the registration is handled by Sandra Elliott. Before we begin our first match for the 4A championship, we'd like to honor our third and fourth place runner-up teams. In third place, we have Green Forest High School and in fourth, we have Pocahontas. And now we're ready to introduce the teams for our 4A conference championship match between Arkadelphia and Monticello. From Arkadelphia, we have Cole Turner, who's a junior. Sydney Maudel, who's a junior. Captain Patrick Hayes, a junior. Owen Phillips, who is a senior. Alex Carter is a junior. Their alternate team members are Cannon Turner, a junior. Xander Adams, who's a sophomore. Kate Batson, who is a junior. Yibo Moyo, who is a junior. Shepard Molinari, who's a sophomore. And Caroline Derby, who is a senior. Nick LaVar is also a senior. Their coach is Steve Patterson, and the assistant coach is Beverly Slavens. Let's hear it for Arkadelphia. And now let me introduce you to the team from Monticello. Maya Renato, who's a sophomore. Lucas Babst, who's a sophomore as well. The captain is Bradley Dallas, who's a senior. Kenny Bragg is a junior. Trey Milburn is a freshman. Their alternate team members are Justin Glosser, who's a senior. Andrew Grissom, who's a sophomore. Aquan Tyler is a junior. And their coach is Ladina Kincaid, and the assistant coach is Casey Braswell. Now let's hear it from, um, for Monticello. Good luck to both of our teams, and let's turn it over now to our quiz master, who is Greg Kuhn.
Cooper. Our regular quiz master, Steve Patterson, will join us later. But first, Steve has some coaching duties to attend to during this very first match. Welcome to our Class 4A state championship. And again, if you were expecting to see Steve this morning, he is up there coaching, but he will join you this afternoon, uh, or later this morning and this afternoon for the rest of the matches. So I'm so privileged to be here with you this morning. And we'll get started here in just a moment. We are glad that you're here with us out in TV land. We appreciate AETN for hosting this event. It's always a great time here as we come together. The first round is 20 toss-up questions. Uh, please wait to be recognized before you give me an answer, and we'll start out with question number one. Largely considered a puppet of Adolf Hitler, he organized his nationalistic black shirt terrorist followers in 1919 to help him gain power. Uh, Arkadelphia Owen. Mussolini. Yes. Question two is a math computation question. You'll have 20 seconds for this question. Find the 15th term in the following arithmetic sequence. 17, 34, 51, 68. Uh, Monticello Lucas. 255. Yes. This Italian-born French astronomer determined the rotational periods of Jupiter, Mars, and Venus and discovered four of Saturn's moons. He studied the division in Saturn's rings named for him. Uh, Monticello Lucas. Galilei. No. Time, that would be Gian Cassini. Her first novel, The Castles of Athlin and Dunbane, was published anonymously, but by her third, The Romance of the Forest, she had achieved national fame. Who is this English novelist, matriarch of the Gothic movement, and author of The Mysteries of Adolfo? Time, that would be Anne Radcliffe. Question five. Starting during the reign of Augustus and ending with the death of Marcus Aurelius, what period of compared... Uh, Monticello Kenny. Pax Romana. Yes. Question six. After the release of his first exhibit, The Dead of Antietam, his photo... Uh, Monticello Kenny. Answer, please. Pass. Time. His photographs greatly influenced the American viewing public about the atrocities of war. This 19th century American photographer produced over 10,000 images of the American Civil War. Uh, Arkadelphia Owen. Green. Now that'd be Matthew Brady. Question seven. After arriving in the U.S. from Santo Domingo in 1803, he became well known for his extensive collection of ornithological observations of North American birds. Uh, Monticello Lucas. Audubon. That's correct. In probability, theory, and statistics, what is the name given to the numerical value used to measure how far a set of numbers are spread out in a given set of data? Arkadelphia Patrick. Standard deviation. No. Monticello Bradley. Scatter plot. Now I have variance. Question nine. In Norse mythology, which of the nine worlds is the dwelling place of the Aesir, a group of warriors? Uh, Monticello Lucas. Asgard. Yes. Question 10. Identify the legislation which admitted two states into the Union, including Maine, and Maine. Um, Arkadelphia Alex. The Missouri Compromise? Yes. Proclaiming himself head of the government following the German invasion of his country in April of 1940, what Norwegian. <laughs> Arkadelphia Owen. Pass. Okay. Uh, Monticello Lucas. Quisling. Quisling is correct. What theorem states there is a point in a continuous curve where the derivative equals the average derivative of entire arc? Uh, Arkadelphia Patrick. Mean value theorem. Yes. 
the second Astronomer Royal in British history, he edited, corrected proofs, and funded Isaac Newton's publication of Philosoph Philosophia Naturalist Principia Mathematica. Identify this English astronomer and mathematician first to calculate the orbit of a comet which was named after him, Arkadelphia Owen. Haley. Yes. Following the 1826 disappearance of whistleblower William Morgan, what political party selected William Wirt in the first presidential nominating convention in United States history, becoming the third party? Uh, Monticello Kenny. The Republican Party? No. Arkadelphia Patrick. Whig. No, that would be the anti-Masonic party. Question 15. His debut play was a semi-autobiographical tale about the misadventures of a womanizing bachelor and his younger brother entitled Come Blow Your Horn. One of the most popular playwrights in the history of the American theater identify this comedic playwright of Lost in Yonkers and The Odd Couple. Time, that'd be Neil Simon. Viewed by many as the founding figure of Western philosophy, he wrote nothing himself, with his teachings surviving through his contemporaries and students. Accused of corrupting the youth of Athens, uh, Monticello Lucas. Socrates. Yes. Question 17. What novel by Thomas Mann tells of the aging author Gustav von Aschenbach contracting cholera while living in Venice and being enticed into a precarious lifestyle that he fears he will be unable to escape? Time, that'd be death in Venice. During what period, earliest of the Paleozoic, did a dramatic explosion of evolutionary changes take place in a relatively small... Uh, Arkadelphia, Alex. The Cambrian? Yes. Originally a right winger, he developed into a forward with a free reign attacking style. Widely considered one of the greatest players of his generation, who is this Portuguese footballer who left Real Madrid to join the... <laughs> Arkadelphia Patrick. Ronaldo. Yes. And question 20. Identify the infamous and controversial U.S. military officer who in 1876 led 200 men to their... Uh, Monticello Kenny. George Armstrong Custer. Yes. And that's the last question of the round. Coaches, any challenges? Challenges? No challenges? We have a score of 70 for Monticello, 60 for Arkadelphia after the first round. We'll move to our second round, which is our toss-up and... Oh, any substitutions? Thank you, Ms. Carolyn. <laughs> any substitutions? Two is our toss-up and bonus round. Toss-up questions can be answered by anyone at the table. The four-part bonus question will be answered by Bradley from Monticello and Patrick for Arkadelphia after consulting with their team. Here is toss-up number 21. In nuclear physics, what is the term given to the minimum amount of fissile material needed to maintain a nuclear chain reaction? Uh, Monticello, Justin. Minimum supply? No. Time, time, sorry, time. That would be critical mass. 
His time spent serving aboard the destroyer minesweeper, the USS Zane, during World War II lent him both the time and experience to write his most famous novel starring Captain Queek. Who is this American author who won the 1952 Pulitzer Prize in Fiction for the Kane Mutiny? Time, that'd be Herman Woke. Question 23. Adapted from William Shakespeare's Romeo and Juliet, this musical by Leonard Bernstein, Arkadelphia Owen. West Side Story? Yes. Nice. Your bonus question is on scientific laws. Identify the scientific law given a brief description. And Patrick, I'll be listening to you. States, galaxies recede from each other with a velocity proportional to their distance. Hubbles. Yes. State's force between two electric charges is directly proportional to the product of their charges and inversely proportional to the square of the distance between them. Anything? Anything? Cool. I don't know. Pass. State's the rate of effusion of a gas is inversely proportional to the square root of its molar mass. Pass. And states the total pressure of a gas mixture is equal to the sum of the partial pressures of its components. Anything? Gay Lussac? Gay Lussacs? No, that would be Dalton's law. The rate of effusion of a gas is Graham's law. And the force between two electric charges is proportional and inversely proportional is Coulomb's law. Toss up for everyone. At what 1945 meeting of Winston Churchill, Joseph Stalin, and Franklin D. Roosevelt, uh, Arkadelphia Alex? The Alta Conference? Yes. Your bonus this time is Monsters of Greek Mythology. Identify the following monsters of Greek mythology given a short description. Multi-headed water serpent killed by Heracles. Hydra. Yes. Creatures that used music to lure sailors to their deaths. Siren. Siren. Yes. <coughs> half human, half goat companions of Dionysus. Satyr. Satyr. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, Beler Bellerophon's winged horse. Pegasus. Pegasus. Yes. Good job. Nice. Back to their toss ups for everyone. This toss up is a math question. Convert 3 pi over 2 radians to degrees. Uh, Monticello Bradley. Need an answer, please. 270 degrees? Yes. Your bonus question is famous literary villains. When given a well-known literary villain and the author that created the villain, name the work in which he or she appears. Long John Silver, Robert Louis Stevenson. Treasure Island. Treasure Island? Yes. Uriah Heep, Charles Dickens. A Tale of Two Cities. No. Kurtz, Joseph Conrad. Heart of Darkness. Heart of dark Darkness? Yes. And Caliban, William Shakespeare. The Tempest? Yes. And Uriah Heep and Charles Dickens was David Copperfield. Toss up number 26. Determined by the Rogers Commission to be caused by failure of the solid rocket booster O-rings, it prompted NASA to temporarily suspend all shuttle missions. Uh, Arkadelphia, Alex. Uh, the uh, Space Shuttle Columbia disaster? No. Uh, Monticello Kenny. The Challenger. It is the Challenger. And the final bonus question is artists and their works. Identify the artist who created each of the following works. The Laughing Cavalier. No. 
The persistence of memory. Dolly. Dolly. Yes. The ambassadors. Dolly. No. Saturn devouring his son. James. No, that would be Francisco <laughs> Goya. The ambassador is Holbein the Younger, and the laughing cavalier is Franz Halls. Which brings us to the end of round two. <coughs> Any challenges? <coughs> Challenges? No. At the end of the round, we have Monticello with 110, Arkadelphia with one, with 105, and we'll give you the categories and the descriptors for the lightning round. And Arkadelphia, you'll get to choose first. And we have arc terms. When given the definition of each, identify the following arc terms. We have presidential election losers. Given the election year. And the person from either of the two major political parties who lost identify the presidential candidate who won the election. And chemistry terms. Identify the following chemistry terms from a brief definition. One minute to discuss. So what do you think so far? Uh, this is a very tight match. The 62nd round is going to determine who's in the driver's seat. And as oddly as it may seem now, I'm going to say Arkadelphia has got the edge right now. They're five points behind. But what that's going to do is that's going to give them the option to pick from those three first. Mm -hmm. What's going to happen is Monticello will have to pick from the other two. Arkadelphia is definitely going to pick one they think they can run. If that happens, it's going to be very difficult. Because if you run 60 seconds, here, here's the way this works. There's six, there's 10 questions. They've got 60 seconds. If they can answer all 10, and the captain will be given the answer, if they answer all 10, they're gonna get a 20 point bonus. This is gonna put the team that comes out of this ahead into that fourth quarter with 200 points out there. If you can accumulate a 40 to 50 point lead, you're gonna be in the driver's seat. Monticello has played very, very well. Very well. And this is their first time. Yes. So they have quite an time. adjustment to make, the butterflies yes. and And it's not a one man team. I'm seeing lots of participation on their team. That's always a plus. Now what they'll have to do is when they hear what Arkadelphia chooses, then they will try to determine who do I put in to get those bounce backs. Because another thing about the six sixty second round is what they miss or pass will go to the other team and they'll get their shot at it. So it's gonna be a very interesting 60 second round. This is really important for this game. As we said at the beginning, this particular round often determines the winner because so much is at stake and it requires quick responses. Yes. And these two teams have gone back and forth all morning. They have, they have. And, and, and they're, if I would say there was anybody nervous, I would say the nerves are on both sides because I've seen some of the students that they would want to answer and just hesitate. All right, let's see let's what happens. We're ready to go back. All right, Cannon, have you taken over the captain's position? What category would you choose? Uh, chemistry. Arkadelphia has chosen chemistry. And Monticello, Bradley, what would you choose? Presidential election losers. Presidential election losers. Did we make substitutions if we needed to on the Monticello side? We're good. All right, here we go with the 60-second uh, lightning round on chemistry terms. Arkadelphia, Cannon, I'll be listening to you for the answers. Please speak loudly and clearly because I'm getting a little older, so I need just a little more. And you're going to identify the following chemistry terms from a brief definition. An ion having a positive charge. Cation. Yes. Term for the lowest energy state of an atom. Ground state. Yes. An ion having a negative charge. An ion. Yes. P parameter representing the state of disorder of a system. Entropy. Entropy. Yes. The number of electrons an atom loses, gains, or shares. Valence. Valence. Yes. An electrode at which reduction occurs. Electrode. Electrode. No. A substance from which water has been removed. Pass. Long molecule made up of a chain of smaller, simpler mo molecules. Pass. 
one of two or more atoms with the same atomic number that contain different numbers of neutrons. Isotope. Yes. Anaerobic conversion of sugar to ethyl alcohol by yeast. Time. Now, they give you a chance to steal numbers six, seven, and eight. Right, judges? Hey, uh, Bradley, be listening to you for the answer. An electrode at which reduction occurs. Anode. Anode? No. A substance from which water has been removed. Dehydrated. Dehydrated. No. And a long molecule made up of a chain of smaller, simpler molecules. Polymer. Polymer. Polymer is correct. A substance from which water has been removed is anhydrous, and an electrode at which reduction occurred, occurs is cathode. All right, Bradley, it's me, you, and presidential losers, okay? <laughs> presidential election losers, I'm going to give you the election year and the person from either of the two major political parties who lost, and you're going to identify the presidential candidate who won that election. I speak loudly and clearly, please. 2008, John McCain. Obama. Barack Obama. Yes. 1988, Michael Dukakis. Reagan. No. 1964, Barry Goldwater. John F. Kennedy. No. 2004, John Kerry. George Bush. George Bush. Be more specific, please. George W. Bush. Yes. 1984, Walter Mondale. Richard Nixon. Richard Nixon. No. 1976, Gerald Ford. Stall. Okay. Give you a chance to steal numbers two, three, and five. Correct. Okay. 1988, Michael Dukakis. H. W. Bush. Uh, George H. W. Bush. Yes. 1964, Barry Goldwater. Lyndon Johnson. Lyndon Johnson. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. And 1984, Walter Mondale. Um, Reagan. Reagan. Uh, Reagan. Uh, yes. Yeah. Correct. <sighs> Coaches, any challenges? That round? No challenges. Uh, end of round three, we have Arkadelphia with 195, Monticello with 140. Any substitutions? All you have to do is look. State of the art, they curated this exhibition of work that would probably have never been seen. I've never heard of any museum doing that. Our idea was to go out on the road to meet with a thousand contemporary artists and to go into all of the communities that make the United States what it is. And what we found was amazing. I don't think everybody's story is being told accurately in the whole history of art. So taking a survey of American art, I think is actually pretty, pretty brilliant. Tomorrow afternoon at 1. Welcome back to our 4A Quiz Bowl Championship. Arkadelphia in the lead right now, 195 to 140. We are in round four, which has 20 toss-up questions, 200 points available, still anybody's game. Here we go with toss-up number 31. One of the most harrowing atrocities of the Vietnam War, it is thought that as many as 500 civilians were killed in this massacre in a small village believed to be a Viet Cong stronghold. Identify this war crime committed by a group of American soldiers led by Lieutenant William L. Kelly. Time, that'd be the My Lai Massacre. In geometry, identify the type of angle whose vertex is a point on a circle and whose sides contain chords of the circle. A Monticello Bradley. An inscribed angle? Yes. 
An editor of the New York Evening Post for over 50 years named the American poet who rose to notoriety at the age of 17 for his poetic masterpiece, Thanatopsis. Time. That'd be William Cullen Bryant. Question 34. After 13 years on the U.S. Court of Appeals for the District of Columbia, Richard Nixon named him successor to Earl Warren in 1969. Named this jurist who oversaw Roe v. Wade, 15th Chief Justice of the Supreme Court. Uh, Arkadelphia Patrick. Reinquist. No. Time. That'd be Warren Burger. Name the strait that separates the continents of Asia and North America at their close uh, Monticello Bradley. The Bering Strait? Yes. Question 36. Well known for his famous painting of a wedding portrait, who is this French, Fl excuse me, who is this Flemish artist? Uh, Monticello Lucas. Van Eyck. Yes. Not a part of any particular poetic school, school or literary practice, they were collectively named only so that they could be disparaged by Francis Jeffrey in the Edinburgh Review. By what name are the English poets William Wordsworth, Samuel Taylor Coleridge, and Robert Southey collectively known? Time, that'd be the Lake Poets. Sailing from Lisbon on a mission to reach India and open a... Uh, Monticello Kenny. Christopher Columbus? No. And open a sea route from Europe to the east in 1497. Identify the Portuguese explorer who became the first European to reach India by sea. Arkadelphia Owen. Da Gama. Da Gama's correct. After the Democratic Party took control of the House of Representatives for the first time in eight years, what longtime politician from California... <laughs> Uh, Arkadelphia Patrick. Nancy Pelosi. Yes. Question 40. Organized by Mohammed Yusuf in 2002, this terrorist organization gained international attention after it kidnapped 276. Uh, Arkadelphia Patrick. Boko Haram. Yes. Question 41. Born in Scotland in 1742, he joined the Continental Navy and helped fight the British aboard the heavily armed warship, the Bonham Richard. Name this American Revolutionary War hero who infamously declared that he had not yet begun to fight during a battle with the British warship, Serapis. Arkadelphia uh, Owen. J. No. Uh, Monticello Kenny. Pershing. Now that'd be John Paul Jones. Yes, sir. Time out from Arkadelphia. mysterious of all the trades you cannot be explained there's a craft that goes along with it but at the same time it's the divine gift it's that thing you can't explain I'm so lonesome, I, could cry. I guess he said it best when somebody asked him Hank how do you write them old sad songs he says hoss I don't write them I just hang on to the pen and God sends them through questions left before we decide a class 4a quiz bowl state champion here we go with question number 42 
what 1942 film winner Best Picture Academy Award? Uh, Monticello Kenny. Casablanca. Yes. Question 43 is a math computation question. Factor the polynomial 3x to the fifth minus 12x squared. Uh, Arkadelphia Cannon. 3x squared times quantity x cubed minus 4. Yes. Nice. Question 44. Set forth in his seminal work, The Origin of Continents and Oceans, named the German meteorologist and geologist who formulated uh, Monticello Lucas. Wagner. Yes. Measuring nearly 230 feet long and 20 inches tall, name this medieval linen embroidery that depicts the events leading up to the <laughs> Arkadelphia Owen. Bayou Tapestry. Yes. Nice. He designed the Harvard University Graduate Center, the United States Embassy in Athens, and the Pan American Building in New York City. Identify this German-American architect and educator best known as the founder of the Bauhaus. Uh, Monticello Justin. John Bow. No. Time, that'd be Walter Gropius. Sentenced to death for his alleged anti-government activities with a radical intellectual group called the Petrushevsky Circle, this author's execution was deferred at the last minute while standing before a firing squad in 1849. Identify this Russian novelist and short story writer, the author of The Brothers Karamazov. Uh, Arkadelphia Owen. Tolstoy. No. Uh, Monticello Justin. Petrosky. No, that would be Dostoevsky. Question 48. Dramatically evident in AIDS patients, what type of cells influence or control the differentiation or activity of other cells of the immune system, especially the adaptive immune system? Monticello Lucas. T cells. Be more specific, please. Helper T cells. Yes. Question 49 is a math computation question. Find the slope of any line perpendicular to the line 4x, 4x minus 2y equals negative 3. Uh, Arkadelphia Cannon. One half. No. Monticello Bradley. Negative one half. Negative one half is correct. And question 50. In which Pulitzer Prize winning novel do the characters Ashley Wilkes, Melanie Hamilton, and Scarlett <laughs> Arkadelphia Sydney? Gone with the Wind. Yes. <laughs> Coaches, any challenges? No challenges here. Yes, we have a challenge here. So there is a challenge. Where do you think it might have stemmed from? I'm, so I'm not sure if I understand where that challenge would come from. Mm -hmm. I didn't see it, but we let, let's reflect back a little bit on something. You were asking me when we were off the camera that about the stall that was How used. How does that work? In the 60-second round, you can stall, and it will kill the rest of the questions. Now, if you pass, that goes to the next team, and they have the opportunity to answer that question. But if you stall, e effectively, you could stall on the very first question mm -hmm. and kill that whole 10 questions. And the point of stalling? On. You don't want the other team to get the opportunity at those questions. And, and, and what was happening sure right then, yeah, what was happening right then, Monticello didn't want that score to get any further. Monticello's got a good solid team. That they, they will more than likely be back. They're young players, they're a good solid team. Arkadelphia, same thing. They're a good solid team and they're very likely to be back too. I see a lot of juniors doing some answering here. Those students will just get sharper and sharper when they come back. Now to reflect back on this uh, challenge, challenges cannot last more than five minutes. That's the limit. The judges will have to make a decision on the challenge, whatever it is. The other thing is, you cannot challenge verbally. You have to have printed material. You can't even bring a laptop because there's so much junk on 
uh, the internet. So you have to bring printed material to prove your point. If it was a mispronunciation, mm -hmm. you know, if they caught that and they thought, okay, the student didn't pronounce it right, they're going to have to lean on the judges and say, all right, this is what it is and here's how it's supposed to be pronounced and that was not what was it. The judges have to listen very, very carefully to every question uh, to get them the pronunciations correct. And in times past, <clears throat> we've seen teams arrive with oh, yeah. boxes full of books, with luggage with books, just to make sure. Yeah. We saw that this morning. <clears throat> you will see milk cartons full of books. You will see all kinds of, and that's another thing we need to address. There are s several students that you will not see in front of the camera. They're very much involved in the game. Coaches will be leaning back and talking to them. I, I was a math teacher. I didn't know a whole lot about literature, but I had students that were with me that I call quiz masters. Mm -hmm. And if there was a question that I thought Okay, a lot of times I didn't catch them at all. My students would peck me on the shoulder and say, Mr. Davis, that's not right. Or there's another answer, and that's correct. You know, we saw some of that expertise this morning with Yibo Moyo, who yes. was substituting Feeding during his the 60-second round. To chemistry. his captain. Same thing happens off camera when the students feed answers to their coaches. Well, our coaches are Joanna Sutton, Sammy Benjamin, and Lisa Morrow, and it appears that we may have a resolution or an answer. So let's go back over to Greg Cooper. Uh, we did have a challenge from the Monticello coach. We'll turn it over to our head judge, Will Heatherly, for an explanation. In the last round, there was a missed scoring in the last 10 toss-ups. Uh, we found the error. The actual score should be a final at 255 to 210. So we're awarding 10 more points to Monticello. All right. So now we have a final score uh, of Arkadelphia 255, Monticello 210. Congratulations, Arkadelphia. Congratulations, Monticello. Monticello. Great match, guys. Thank you. Yes, sir. congratulations mm -hmm. to Arkadelphia as well. Yeah, so. That was a very good match, and I would say this. If these two teams were to square off again, you could not predict the winner. Monticello has yeah. a state championship appearance under their belt now, which yes. was a first for them. Yes. So it looks like Amanda McMahon and Carolyn Try are ready to award the trophy and the prize money, so let's go look over to them. Well, I think they're still working on that. They're still working on they're getting that. We can, we can e that. expand on this a little bit because I do believe both of these teams, you know, today we have a team, we have a game <clears throat> that the two teams were here last year, Russellville and Greenwood. They were here last year. It's going to be a rematch. It's going to be exciting. This could happen to these two teams it next sure year. Could. We could see a rematch. Now, I saw the third and fourth place teams that were in this division, and they're both very, very strong. But... I would not be surprised at all if we don't see Arkadelphia and Monticello play again next year. And they have only a couple of seniors on both teams. Yes. I think the senior from Monticello was a captain. And so you're right, we could see them again. Now we are ready for the awarding of the trophy and the prize money. Hey, congratulations as being the 4A runner-up, and we are awarding you with $1,500. <clears throat> And congratulations on being the 4A champion, and we are awarding you with $3,000. <laughs> <laughs> and now we have our MVP for this tournament. <clears throat> Wasn't really much a uh, question about this ever. Uh, Lucas, come on up here and get your MVP medal. And your... <clears throat> trophy. Congratulations to Lucas from Monticello. And you need a little money to go with that. <laughs> we also have the rest of the all-tournament team to tell you about. We have Henry Holtkamp from Green Forest, Ethan Brazil from Malvern, Olman Pineda from Nashville, Alex Carter of Arkadelphia over here, who will... <laughs> gonna get a medal too, but just not the same one that Lucas got. <laughs> uh, Dakota Hall Albert of Berryville, 
Logan Little from Pocahontas, and Nathan Cowling of Malvern. That is our 4A all-tournament team today. Congratulations to all of you. Thank you, Carolyn. As you might expect, many of our Quiz Bowl students go on to do great things. Leonard Cooper is now a student at Brown University, and he tells us what Quiz Bowl taught him and how its community impacted him. Caesar pretends three times to refuse the crown from this man who later speaks on his behalf. Mark Anthony, right? Me, yeah. 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 Mark Anthony? Yes. When an airline pilot made a decision, Leonard. Sullenberger. Yes. Using a. Uh, Leonard. Algorithm. You're right. The, uh, Leonard. Saturn. Yes. After doing Quiz Bowl and like doing Jeopardy and like all the turns and everything, uh, it kind of helps you consolidate a lot of knowledge and knowing, figuring out what's important, figuring out how to study for certain things or how to uh, get just the essence of the information that you need, uh, whether it's in class or just, you know, from a lecture or something. I think that's the best skill it's taught me as far as, you know, being in school and uh, being a student, you know, learning uh, in college courses. What vitamin that helps protect cells from degeneration is known as picoferol? Leonard. Vitamin E. Leonard, you guessed what? Job. <laughs> when you first start, like when I first started, you, you're not going to answer everything. There's going to be people who are way better than you and faster than you. And, you know, that's just kind of how it is with any like competitive activity, especially one that's you know so much so tied to what people are learning in school. And, like, it's just it's something that you have to kind of practice and understand for a while before you really get how to play it. Um, but the best thing about it is that if you keep doing it enough, um, and even the first couple times you go, usually what gets you like really interested is that there might be a question or two that like you know the answer to that other people who have been out buzzing you the whole time don't and you buzz in you get it right and you're like oh yeah cool okay i knew something i think especially for like those state broadcast tournaments uh like the ones on atm that you see like the state finals and everything it's because you, all people see when they watch those is just like the top two teams and they'll make mention of like you know third and fourth place and then the the all tournament players like the all-star players uh, and that's kind of all you see but it's it's really interesting knowing just how many schools, especially you know as you go up in divisions and just how many schools and how many kids and how many players are involved with the organization that you really don't get to see much of, or like good players that you don't get to see much of. You know, you only get to see the top two teams, and that's one of the cool parts about it is that there's so many students involved in it. There's like a really big community. I'm Leonard Cooper. You're watching the Quiz Bowl State Finals on AATN. Adventurous. Oh, Those venturing out for the first time. And those who've never lost our sense of wonder. Whoa. You seeing this? We are the hungry. Okay. The strong. I must be the greater. The joyful. A happy little cloud. We believe there is always more we can uncover. More we can explore. We believe in the capacity for goodness. And the potential for greatness. The torch has been passed to a new generation of Americans. PBS. 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 Anytime we want. Anywhere we are.
everywhere. All you have to do is look. State of the art, they curated this exhibition of work that would probably have never been seen. I've never heard of any museum doing that. Our idea was to go out on the road to meet with a thousand contemporary artists and to go into all of the communities that make the United States what it is. And what we found was amazing. I don't think everybody's story is being told accurately in the whole history of art. So taking a survey of American art, I think is actually pretty, pretty brilliant. Tomorrow afternoon at 1.